cultural barriers lead effectively. I'll just share with you my journey. This room is, is, is diverse and large. I probably may not appeal to everyone, but just maybe, just maybe, if you allow me in the next few minutes, I may be able to appeal to you. I'm gonna share with you five mind shifts that has helped me on my journey. The principles that I deployed in, in attaining those mind shifts and how I'm using those mind shifts to lead effectively. Spirit of God, you're the spirit of truth. Let me hide behind you so that men may see you. In Jesus' name I pray. I was born in Zaria, in the northern part of Nigeria. But I grew up in Niger State, in Pandogari. Pandogari is a Niger State, is sandwiched between Zengeru, Kagara, Pandogari, Bernongwari, then you go to Kaduna. <laughs> and Pandogari is in the north of Nigeria. The reason it's important for me to share that bit of, of my life with you is there is a sense in which we gather like this and you see this. But I grew up, I was raised by a maternal grandmother. I went to an LEA primary school. LEA is Local Education Authority, specifically Central Primary School, Pandogari. And the kind of nursery rhymes we sang in school was, I didn't sing Peter Pepe Pige. <laughs> and then we say, and when we stand and we want to recite the national anthem, I, I did not even know the lyrics. Nigeria Kwalobe. But that was then. The responsibility to become the version of you that you want is yours. Your placement in life is deliberate. I was raised by my grandmother because my, mommy, my mom had me early in life. I won't go too much into that. I, still, I have never met my dad. I still have not. And so God, when I call him father, I'm not, I'm not a joker. I mean it. Is the only father I knew until he began to position men in my life. One of it, the man in this house. As a little girl, I went to primary school one day. Identity, I'm speaking to identity. I'll get on the slides, don't worry. I went to primary school one day and, you know, I came first in school. They gave us, in this part of the world, we have what we call report card. I don't know if that has changed. It was not a big deal, right? But I had a previous experience where I had come topmost in class. And, and the way my friends, they were my friends, reacted to me wasn't exactly nice. I really didn't know what informed that. It's not every time that people react to you negatively that it is born out of hatred. Sometimes it's even because they don't even know how to react to your success. So free your mind. Anyways. So I knew that it was not gonna be funny, so I left the class as soon as they issued us the report card and I went to the headmaster's office and I said, I'd like to tag with you to go home. The reason is because I didn't want my friends to assess me. But they could not reach me with their hands, but their mouth cooled. And my very close friend, her name is Fasila Tijima, she said in Hausa, Shegia me kapan agwagwa. Literal, what that means in English is, you, uh, I have dog's leg, I walk like a dog. What does a nine, uh, eight year old, I, I'm sure she didn't mean it. It's not everything they have called you that they mean. They were just angry at that moment and they spoke from what they know. So I got home so that because of our time, I got home and I cried, I cried all day. My grandmother, she didn't beg me, she didn't pet me, she didn't say one, 
I cried in soprano, I cried in tenor, I cried in treble. <laughs> you know that type of crying? That you cry until you sleep. And when I woke up, she said, are you ready to tell me what the problem is? By the way, she spoke to me in Yoruba. You don't expect my grandmother to speak in Hausa. I mean, to speak in English, I said, yes. Yeah. She said, what happened? I said, so I'll say it the way I said it to her, so that you understand. I said, and she be, she be fasila luni, let's say, make me, let's say, pay me. It's my friend that said my legs like that of a dog, and I walk like a dog. And she said, she expect me anyone. What that means is, are you a dog? I don't want to be rude, but if your neighbor doesn't mind, ask him. Shake back by you anyone. How how come? How come what someone has said on Instagram is giving you sleepless night? Shake back by you anyone. The mind shifts that you need is to have the right identity of who you are. Mama gave me a template that I can choose to be whoever I And I said, no, I'm not a dog. And then she said, she has shek, me, me, ye, le, se, I said, no, of course, my legs are not like that of a dog. She said, so what does it matter? Then she asked me a question. When she called you, when she described you as such, what did you? And I said, nothing. She said, that's why you are crying. I went back to my friend's house that night. <laughs> I was eight because it's either I was eight or seven. The reason I think so is I went to form one nine. So I'm, it was at primary school, so I must have been seven or eight. She wasn't at home. I met her mother. I was so young and so naive, and I was on a mission that I didn't meet my friend, but I gave the message to the mother. I'm not a dog, I don't walk like a dog, but even if that is the situation, that is what God has made me. I took my time because the issue of self-awareness, the issue of self-identity is something that will stay with you all of life. And if you don't deal with it, it will continue to crop up. So your friends say things you don't like, and then you exit the WhatsApp. Will you exit the company too? <laughs> or your boss says something you don't like, then you resign. What about when you are the governor? Would you resign? That is why you have to deal with it. And so God helped me with that experience. And I realized that they themselves, according to James Allen, I don't know if we can get this going now. They themselves are makers of themselves. I realized that I can choose my thoughts. So I learned that day that I was not a dog. I have not stopped learning. My second story, still related to identity. We went home for Christmas and Mama took me to her sister's place. And my grandmom's aunt now, or sister, asked me to feed the cat. You know, in Yoruba, we have a saying that you don't go to the house of the old person for free. And I ran after the cat. I was doing all manner. And I fell down. And then eventually, Mama came and she asked in Yoruba, please permit me. Um, I really, I just want to, I, I, I don't just want to point information at you. I want to walk you through my journey, right? And she said, She olombo, lonle baon, so le muni. Ah, le pros, talia. And it's yo, folongbo, lonje, yo shebi olombo. Let me explain. Is that the cat you are running after? The cat is an elegant animal. You can't catch it. You want to be like the cat? You want to feed the cat? You make the cat come. You already have a reward. That was the day I realized that success is who I am, not what I'm running after. You didn't hear me. <laughs> and so, even though I was raised in the village and I grew up with grandmothers and my mother had me when she wasn't planning, and my dad never showed up, I dealt with it. I received grace from God for forgiveness. I received grace to call myself what God calls me. And I made a commitment to myself and to God. I will make it. But it was not to prove to anyone. It was to remind myself my identity, who I was and who God called me. What were, what was the mind shift 
The mind shift was rejection. I'm trying to get my slide going. Actually, good. Okay, sorry. The mind shift was, okay, there you go. Rejection of all thought patterns. Rejection of limitation that I've put on myself, not just the one people put on me. The mind shift was to take the shackles off my own. You need to unbuckle your sander by yourself. Tell your neighbor, unbuckle yourself. Free yourself. <laughs> Tell your friend, unboss. 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 What were the principles? I had to start thinking correctly. So when I started my career, this was the mindset that I came into career. When I was in, when I was in ADU, and just so you know, my mom was not a bad woman. Now I understand her journey. You will understand later when I get to, to that. I know my time is running, but we're, we're going to be good. But in between holidays, in every year I was an undergraduate studying pharmacy. But in between holidays, I would go to my grandmother's sister's place who had an amala, amala buka to help to sell amala. If you understand why God has placed you where he has placed you, you won't throw away that entire experience of growing up and start running after something that doesn't make sense. Because God is in the recycling business. He will build values in you. Hard work, integrity, you know, endurance, resilience. Then he will shift the circumstance to test the values. Tell your, bro tell your neighbor, the trouble you're going through is a test of value. By the time I started working in my early career years, because I had sat, have you ever seen hungry people? When they want, you know, they all demand all the part of the meat, I know it. I was used to attending to hungry people. So by the time I got an opportunity to work in a structured system as a medical rep, it was, a, it was recycling. The only difference is it was not a mala they were selling. So hear me, I knew how to sell and engage, but I needed to gain knowledge for my current situation. Because you are a manager does not mean you stop learning. You need to learn for dinner. Is that okay? So I had to gain knowledge, I gain capabilities, I gain competencies. I'm moving out of this, work on things that people can't take from you as you navigate your identity journey. Work on character, work on comportment, work on credibility, work on confidence, <laughs> work on your grammar. That was why I told you the nursery rhymes. I've read all manner of books from James Hadley Chase, if tomorrow comes, all that, to Mills and Boone, to Pest Setter series. And as I matured in the faith, I began to refine what I read. Now I read Adam Grant, Samadeemi, Brendan Bouchard, Brandy Brown. Keep reading. Put in things that will help you. You need to have an image, then you, you work to attain the image. So the whole of identity is about creating an image of yourself that you like and working to attain it. If you work on identity, you would have worked on something that is called leadership identity. You will not have an exaggerated version of yourself. And every day there's a prayer I pray. You know why? Because I started from Pandogari. Work on an identity. You won't have altered ego. You will deal with it and will help your journey of life. I'll move to the second mind shift that helped me becoming. This is probably where I will spend the biggest time. I have so many things in my heart. Becoming. If you chase a butterfly, it will run away. If you cultivate a garden, butterflies will come to you. You want to be successful? Be successful in your mind and then learn. And then the money will come. People place a premium on value. And when you have it, they will look for you. Incidentally, when they look for you, they won't care whether you are black or brown or short or green. If you do not become, you will make a mockery of the journey of preparation that God gave you. Test someone, your village life was a platform. Don't throw it away. After I had done my early career years, I had built capabilities and competencies. I was learning how to do a few things. I had dealt with a bit of um, identity issue, emotional intelligence, you know, all that. I realized I had to learn the work. 
And then while I was learning the work, something happened. I joined an organization. This time around, I was no longer an individual contributor. It was my middle-level management year. And I joined this organization, and I was barely three months in the organization. I met four people, three people that were on the same role as myself. So there were four of us as a middle-level management role. And I was barely three months, and all three resigned, one after the other. And I recall I ran into the bathroom one day, and I called my mom, and I said, this place is not a good place. Everybody is leaving. And she said, did you come together? <laughs> now, remember, I didn't say my grandmother. I said my... Because now I was mature, and I could relate with that. The reason we weren't related, I don't want to go into too much of that. For forgive your parents. It's okay. You've held it for too long. Otherwise, you will miss the season for which God positioned them. You need to hear me. Everybody is not wired for your growing up years. When I entered career, my mom was old, but mommy was up. My mother is a professor. She said, I don't understand. Did you, did you, did you join the organization together? Why would you want to leave? Because everybody is leaving. I said, no, this place is toxic. The work is too much. She said, it's one of two things. It's either you don't know how to do the work or you will have the humility to learn if you wait. Stop quitting. The hard place is meant to make you become. And so I was the only manager who, in that category for a period of um, nine, nine months. <laughs> nine months of doing three people's job on top of yours. Something gives. And I was on my way. And then they gave me a letter. The letter was marketing manager. The letter was issued in the morning. By afternoon, the letter was withdrawn. I was told that there was a little problem they need to fix. When they returned the letter, they had removed the marketing manager. And it was still my role. It's just that now they just put, they added, a, it was a product manager, so they just put product manager primary care. I was upset. And I went again into the bathroom, crying, and I called my mom. And she said, were you told any reason why it was withdrawn? I said, no. She said, if you are a marketing manager material, the letter will come back. Tell somebody next to you, don't resign. If you deserve that promotion, it will come back. Becoming is about managing disappointment. Becoming is about managing betrayal. Becoming is about being upset and working. Doing what you need to do even when you are not happy. Becoming is about living out of yourself. Realizing that every day is not Monday. Becoming is knowing that there will be a weekend. So all experiences in life are evolving a version of you. And... Um, the principle, the self-awareness principle on that becoming, or rather it's, it's called leadership recognition. If you want people to remember you as that person who is always angry, becoming is the time you deal with anger even when you're not happy. Otherwise, you will develop a brand you did not plan. So they will say she's efficient, but unbearable. Becoming is your mental awareness to know I am hurting, but I need to be careful how I am coming across so that I do not project a version of me that is not real. Perception is reality. Stop saying, and let them say what they like. What they are saying matters. If you're going to rise up in that organization, becoming is when you settle it. So they withdrew the marketing management letter, but they didn't withdraw the marketing management readiness. And when God was ready, that letter came back. There were a few things that helped me, which were principles to handle becoming, sacrifice, patience, fruit of the spirit, responsibility, visualization, self-talk. Do you talk to yourself? Please learn it. A while ago, Pastor Nika was teaching me how to do selfie. We don't know how to do everything right. I've never, I've never stood to do a video of myself, but I do express myself well when I can, but I just can't unbox, and, but I have to learn that right, but I self-talk. I remind myself who I am. I remind myself where I'm going. I remind myself that it's going to be oh. It was in that organization that my friends were getting married. If I'm, 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 I'm single. <laughs> I'm sassy. And I'm grateful. Did you hear me? 
it was in that becoming stage that my friends, that my friends were getting married, I focused on what I could control. Becoming gives you grace to focus on what you cannot control. Is that okay? I had a difficult manager. If you asked me 20, 15 years ago, I would have said he was wicked. Stop calling people wicked. Looking back now, he had a different management style. It was because of becoming a fruit of the spirit, I told God, I'm not going to hate him, but he gave me a prototype of how I didn't want to lead. What has your stepmom taught you? All you, you are so angry, you are not realizing you're becoming what you hate. Becoming is when you work on your brand recognition. Um, find a mentor. The first one in my life was my mom. The first time I saw Pastor Sam, I didn't plan this, <laughs> it's just coming to me, was I was the head of a protocol in a church. And I served him water. He came, it was at um, Dopemu. He came with Pastor Godman. And I said, knelt down to give the word that God said, follow him. That was all. I read all the books and listened to all his tapes. I'm still doing that. There was a time for about four years, I tweet everything he says. You would think my Twitter handle was his. Until one day the Holy Spirit said, we need to work on your brand recognition. Otherwise... Sorry, Pastor Sam, that was when I started. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, even people who have hurt you and who were not there in the formative years of your life can mentor you. At a time when I needed mom, God used that. There's a book, um, In a Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day. I read a lot. I think that's Mark Betterson. Pick that book if you can. You cannot, because it is raining, you cannot, because you are in a pit, a lion will come. Then you will not say, eh, oh, the lion will leave me. Becoming is when you face your fears. Is that okay? Thank you, Lord. Um, let's, let's, let, let's, go, let's go to something else. Let's go to something else. The thought might shift. The thought might shift that helped my journey. Uh, I was looking for redefining. There you go, that's it. Redefining, that's the third my chief. So you see, the first was identity. Getting a picture of who I want to be, holding that picture there and running after that picture. The second was becoming. Working so hard, but handling disappointment and betrayal, handling lack of recognition, patience, because when they withdrew those letters, right? <laughs> but there is redefining. God had to teach me that things are not always smooth. I became very close with my mom, and we were close for just five years. She's still my best friend. I have not been able to find a replacement for her. But life hit. My grandmother died. She was elderly, but you never want them to go. By the way, she died, and I was still single. And then my only brother died. He died a week before he was called to bar in an auto crash. And then my mom died in an auto crash. She was 60. And the ground that I was standing on shifted. When the ground that you are standing on shifts, what do you do? The values that I've learned of faith in God. So today, I need, to, I need you to hear me for anybody going through difficult times and tragedy. Your parents may not be here. But God will give you a platform. And then you will talk about them. How about that one? That's redefining. I had to redefine what life was. I was single. My friends were getting married. And tragedy hit. But even if you are angry from here to tomorrow, everybody in your office will not lose their mother. Stop being cranky. If you can't handle it, get out. I was tired. I became vulnerable. And things that didn't used to matter began to matter. One day I overheard someone uh, saying that... Um, Oh, I was a marketing manager by this time. Mark, our strategies are not right, blah, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. And I was hurt. In the morning, and by afternoon, another thing happened with another employee. And I went to the bathroom to cry two times. But this time around, I didn't have a mother to call. Can you see what redefining is? You can't depend on your grandmother's faith forever. You can't even depend on your mom's. I didn't have a mother to call, but I had a God 
who lives in the inside of me. And I said, I wish I had another job. And God said, you don't need a job to leave this place. That was the day I resigned. The courage to trust that the voice inside you is God is redefining. It's by vote, it's a pivot in your life when you begin to hear. Just because I could trust him with that, the day he told me I will speak at ELC. Do you understand? If you've not trusted God with the things he's been saying, how do you expect him to keep talking? I, I, I put in my letter that day respectfully. It was the 19th of May of that year. I put it, sorry, I wrote the letter that day at night. I need you to hear me. Maybe if my mom was alive, I wouldn't have resigned. You know why? I would have laced with her. But maybe if I was married also, I would not have resigned. Your situation is not, is not a pressure point for God. He knows, he knows, he knows you are alone. He knows. Tell someone, he knows. he knows. So I wrote my letter. I put it in the next morning. And I worked till the end of that month. But you know, I was a manager. I needed to give the organization 30 days. I actually asked them to take my salary. Because I didn't want that word to wait. And I left that place. I went to the US by the grace of God just for that time I could save some time to stay with her friends. But that was when I was eventually able to mourn my mom. I didn't know that I had been hiding on that work. But I was hurting. Pastor Nika was speaking to when you hurt and you need to deal with it. I was there for just 30 days. I dealt with it by the grace of God. I came back to Nigeria and that was when I realized I was sick. Redefining. I had a surgical procedure. I had uterine fibroids. I'm being very vulnerable. My daddy asked me, how vulnerable do you want to be? Because somebody needs to relate. You know, there's a way we pray. God, you know I'm alone. And now I have this. The procedure happened. I was in my hospital gown when the current organization where I work, when they came calling. As a matter of fact, we had done a previous profiling where I went to the, to the office in person. But by the time the proper interview, and I told the HR, I'm not able to come for that process. And the organization said, okay, unfortunately, we have to take your name out of the candidacy. I said, that's fine. And two days later, they called back. I still had my stitches from the surgery. And they said, would you be able to do Skype? It was Skype. That time, Zoom was not popular, 2014. And I said, I, I didn't want to explain that it was surgery I had, because I was losing breath. I said, okay, I'll try. We had a Skype interview. I have a driver of 17 years who has driven me. He stood by the side. They couldn't see him. He was giving me glucose boost. If you are single and your mechanic, you are treating them with disrespect, you will miss God. Yes. If you are a widow and the delivery man, you disrespect him because he's doing delivery, you will miss God. I have a driver, if you like, call him husband. He has been everything. Because I don't see him, I see God. When God realizes the kind of situation you have, he positions people to help you. So we did the interview. I got the job. I came into the system. Remember I had resigned? It was just, I resigned in May. I went to U.S. in June. I, got, I did interview in July. You know they will give you time. I resume in September. Three, six months after I joined that company, I, was, I, I joined as a marketing director, franchise head as we call it. Six months after I joined them, I was redesignated as business unit head, that's director of sales and marketing. Three years later, I was made MD. I'm six, nine years in that organization today. Six out of that, I'm, I've been the MD of Nigeria. And Ghana, as at that time. Let me share something that just came to my mind. The day I was told that I've been appointed as marketing, as MD of that company, GM, what we call general manager and country lead, I called my mom. You know why? I forgot that she was dead. Because when you have a personal story, there, there comes a time in your life when there are, there's only somebody you want to speak with. It was in my office, I was locked up alone. And as I called, I had a SIM card, the phone rang in front of me and it had mom see, and a tear came, but it didn't fall. I heard the Holy Spirit. He said, you want to mark this important day with tears? And I did like this. And I packed my laptop. My team did not know, one of them is here, he was working with me as a product manager at that time. I said, oh yeah, are you anywhere? Can you stand up? I'm sorry to do this. Today is a director in that same company. Please sit down. <laughs> they didn't know what was happening. They didn't know I had been told I was going to be MD, right? <laughs> I packed my bag. 
I went home alone on my bed with my God and my appointment letter. And as I lay down, I didn't cry. I slept off. And when I woke up around 7 p.m., the Lord said, now I have raised for you a father. And I took my letter and I booked an appointment. The rest is story. If you, if you cry too much, you won't hear. And if you use every inconvenience to complain, you will miss what God is saying. My point is, you were abandoned, but there are other people who love you. My point is, your parents are not there, but there are so many fathers in the house. Come on, let God. Redefining is that stage of your life. When you interpret, you redefine the meaning of life and work. You will take out all your previous explanation of what life is and you will redefine it. It was Helen Keller who said, a bend in the road is not the end of the road unless if you fail to make the turn. Whether Nigeria is tough, you've graduated, you've not been able to find something, you are feeling less than yourself. That's not who you are. However, you have some work to do. Get an accurate assessment of your person, that's self-identity. Begin to walk towards the, um, the picture that you have created, that's becoming. And then as you become as an entrepreneur and the business crashes, redefine. Is that okay? Thank you, Spirit of God. I have a little under 10 minutes, but we're doing this very well. The principles that I deployed that helped my becoming journey were risk-taking. It takes risks to resign. <laughs> it was unlearning fear. A man who has lost so much. The reason you are still afraid is because you are surrounded. You have mother, you I'm sorry, I, I'm not hitting her. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. If you have learned to hold and you have learned to release, you will take risk. Right. It's because you are holding too many things. You are, oh, and sometimes what we're holding is not even people, it's our ego. Emike, who are you? <laughs> Emike, I mean, the only version of the universe you can possibly improve is yourself. And when that version is improved, you can share that version with the world. So work on you. Risk taking, defying the odds, looking foolish, hearing God, re-evaluating faith. These were the principles that helped my becoming John. Avoid comparisons. I think that was spoken to in the morning. Uh, the idea of how things should have been on how life should... Stop saying, I wish... Ah, it's okay. Stop saying, I wish if only I got this job when I was 30. What's wrong getting it 75? It's okay. Be the first person to do it at 75. How about that? How about that? Focus on the things you can control and leave the ones you can't control. Let's go to the, to the next one. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this down. Um, purpose. Thank you, Spirit of God. I love this. You see, if you don't redefine, you can't fulfill purpose. Well, after I was appointed GM, I had taken over from, ex, um, um, from experts, right? So I was a black person coming into something that probably Europeans or Caucasians have done. And I went through that process with other co-compatriots. Stop saying, they, they, they gave me, they didn't give them. God showed them. God didn't show them anything. It was just your time. Stop, stop. It's, it's thinking. It's thinking. So after I got that job, the first assignment God gave me was forgiveness. Because three months, I had to do the compensation and to defend with Paris of someone that didn't get that job, who was bitter, and, and he's not a bad person. The person was doing his job, but he was not even greeting me, and he was reporting to me. So what were you going to do? Refuse his salary? Then God will know, uh, LA. So what I'm saying is, if you have dealt with redefining, then you can fulfill purpose. <laughs> is that okay? So God gave me courage, grace for forgiveness. I remember how I used to pray for my team by the rank, as if they were Israelis. I had to look for a way. I did a, a mind map, you know, of of, of all of them by their leaders and by their rank. And when I wake up in the morning, I pray for the leader and it flows down. Scripture says it's like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron. I had a 
clear understanding of what it was. And every time I went to the region, even when I know that those guys went probably not up to, there was no way you will catch me speaking ill of my people. You can't disregard what you've been called to lead. And you cannot, you cannot undermine what you have been made a shepherd over. God gave me that understanding. So I prayed for my team. I asked for grace, for forgiveness. I was hurt on every side, but I was not crushed because I was feeling purpose. The blessings of God will complicate your life. I know scripture said it will not add sorrow. I didn't say you will have sorrow. I only say it will complicate because success will change the structure of your relationships. Even your friends will have challenge relating with you. They are not envious. They are confused. You used to be friends. Now you are an MD. That's why they are pulling back. It's not envy. Correct that mindset. You know, this morning I have my friend's protocol. I, say, I prayed yesterday and I say, Holy Spirit, I know this is another learning. Teach me how to be in the center stage and not forget my people. Is that okay? Purpose is going to make a demand on all the values that you have built over time. I like this one. Don't confuse inexperience with being unqualified. I had never been a GM before. I was inexperienced, but I didn't disqualify myself. So I dealt with it. If it has to do with learning, you know, I'm an animated speaker. Um, I'm trying to keep it together. <laughs> This version of me that you see is a journey, and I'm still working on it until, like Pastor Sam, I can say, you see? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Live a proactive life. Throw challenge at yourself. Help others to unleash their potential. That's what purpose is for. Uh, help others to... Clarity will reveal itself. A lot of times we say, I don't even know what my purpose is. You know it. You are just not moving. Clarity will reveal itself in momentum. When you get to that place and it is not the road, what do you do? When you move, the purpose will declare. Is that okay? So, and, and sometimes we think it's only one purpose we've got for the whole of life. Really? <laughs> Even your season is changing. Your hair is changing. Why won't the purpose change? But that's not the topic for today. That's what I have for you. And as I begin to bring this down really, really on the two minutes, I want to speak to more. Thank you, Spirit of God. You have helped me. Thank you. I want to speak to more. This is about big picture thinking. How do you move yourself out of the mundane? You see, the universe of the ordinary is crowded. If you think ordinary, you will think of who likes you, who doesn't like you, what you wear, what you know, where you want. Just be you. As I was preparing for this meeting, someone called me and said, ha, your hair. I said, even if I use weave, weave on, it will fall. Because typically, I don't like it. I say, don't worry yourself. I'll just be me. <laughs> Is that okay? Nails, I say, if I fix it, they will know that it's the first time. <laughs> because I'll be, I'll be dealing with my hands. What I'm saying is, that there is place for your peculiarity and the way you are. Like Pastor Nika will say, breathe. <laughs> breathe, hallelujah. Pray the unthinkable. I just want to say a few things. If you like, if you can just help me get that slide on more. Pray the unthinkable. Attempt the impossible. I don't know what you're thinking about, but I, um, I, 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 I woke up this morning and I said, God, if I'm already speaking at ELC, I said it in Yoruba because I think in Yoruba. And by the way, some of you, you need to define which language you're thinking. That's why you're not clear. Because you're thinking too much in English. Think in Urobo. You hear me? I said, <laughs> that okay? God, where next are we going? Yes. Think global. The word is available. Trust God. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Move out of the comfort zone. Learning happen at the edge of discomfort. If you are not comfortable being awkward, you won't grow. If you don't know how to do it, ask. If you have asked and you have, you know, all that we're doing here is just information. I hope you know don't, don't be delusional, right? This is information. You need to now step back and what? Implement, act on it. Is that okay? Don't settle for prudence. Strive for valence. There is more. Don't settle for prudence because only those who will read going too far can possibly find out how far they can. 
I didn't know I could speak at ELC. And since the day they told me I've not been myself. In three seconds, that's done. 